So we have the Silent Hill 2 remake here. Decided to pick this up. It is launch day. And normally I won't pick up games on launch day unless it's something that I'm really excited for. And I was only like tentatively excited about this one. Because I was well aware of Konami's recent track record with their remasters and how they tend to not go very well, such as the Zone of the Enders remaster, which had Zo 2 end up being running at half frame rate, and the Silent Hill remasters from a decade ago that were just garbage. This was a full remake, and Konami wasn't handling it themselves, but Konami doesn't put a lot of respect into their old games and even their modern IPs. They don't... Konami just is not is checked out from the gaming industry, basically, and has been for quite a while. So I didn't have a lot of faith in this. And then when I saw some of the early, like, trailers and stuff, I saw some troubling things. I didn't like the look of James. I thought maybe there was some design issues I had with what I was seeing in the game so far. Plus there was the, de the development team, which is an indie studio that builds a lot of survival horror games, and they've been a little bit hit or miss, although they, I do note that they do seem to have been improving during this whole time. So they were improving, um, but it did seem like a bit of a stretch that they'd take on what is essentially a full AAA game, one that's so much beloved by the, um, by the fan base. So I thought like, oh my God, there's a chance that they're a good chance they're gonna fuck this up. So I decided, you know what? Temper my expectations. But the more recent trailers and gameplay reveals and all that kind of stuff, they started to get me a little bit more excited. And then reviews dropped a few days before the game launched, which is always a good sign if a developer is confident enough in a game to send out review copies early enough to have pre-release reviews. That's, a, that's kind of a good sign. And then the game is doing well in reviews, so I thought, fuck it, let me get it on launch day. Here we go. And this is not the first time I'm booting the game, but the first time I'm actually getting into it, though. Because I, I got busy. So, the, I'm playing through this blind. Now the footsteps. The footsteps. The loading screens. Ah, son of a bitch. There we go. <laughs> My headphones aren't working, so audio might be a little bit of a problem here. Ah, oh, they got that shot in there. The, the screen is a little dark. Mary. Could you really be in this town? Restless dreams, I see that town. Silent Hill. You promised you'd take me there again someday. But you never did. Well, 
I'm alone there now, in our special place, waiting for you. I got a letter. The name on the envelope said Mary. My wife's name. It's ridiculous. Couldn't possibly be true. That's what I keep telling myself. Mary died of that damn disease three years ago. So then why am I looking for her? special place. What could she mean? This whole town was our special place. Could Mary really be here? Is she really alive? Waiting for me? Oh, I have control. <laughs> All right, so let's take a second to look at this and just enjoy this scene. They, I mean, the PlayStation 2 version was a remarkably good-looking game for its day. Like, there was a lot of talk leading up to the launch of the PlayStation 2, or in the early days of the PlayStation 2, of it being something of a graphical disappointment because a lot of the games came out like it launched a year or so after the Dreamcast and did not look like it was a year more advanced the Dreamcast was an easier system to develop for and they managed to harness the power of the Dreamcast pretty quickly whereas the PlayStation 2 took some time and it wasn't helped by the fact that the GameCube and the Xbox were on the horizon promising to look even better so a lot of people are looking down on the PS2. But Silent Hill 2, along with games like Metal Gear Solid 2 and others, really started to demonstrate like what the PlayStation 2 could pull off if developers really put their mind to it. So the game looked fantastic on the PlayStation 2. So this game, in a way, in order to live up to that legacy, had to look really good itself. And there were a lot of people talking shit on it during the early pre-release uh, footage, trailers, all that kind of stuff, that the game just did not look good, but honestly here, I could say that this game looks fucking fantastic. Perhaps the character model is not quite pristine, but you know, that's something that I'm not too worried that much about. I'm more looking at the environment. The trees only look kind of alright, but like the ground and the reflections, the ray tracing reflections in the water and all that kind of stuff, the leaves blowing about on the ground, these posters getting blown around, the fact that you can tell that it's raining is really nice. Will this drip off of him if I stand here? Huh. No, it won't. Oh, I can't have it all. The fact that I can't see the city I mean, in the original game, you could see the city because the fog cleared for a few seconds. Here, you just see the lake. There's so much little detail in the original game, and it looks like it's been carried over into this one, that makes you think, like, I don't, I don't know if it was intentional or not, but there's just little things here and there, like the fact that James was in the bathroom, he parks his car, and then he leaves the freaking door open when he goes into the bathroom. And he walks away from his car with the door open. Oh, you can shut it. <laughs> can I open that? What happens if the map was still in there? The fact that he left the door open. This happened in the original game as well. How do I run? Oh, okay. L1 runs. The fact that he would leave the door open just is a demonstration of how messed up he is emotionally. That he's so unconcerned with things like closing the door to his car because of how emotionally fucked up he is. 
running animation is a little goofy, but in reality, people do actually sort of run stupid looking in real life. Welcome, road closed. Like this, even when we're out here and nothing crazy's happened yet, this sign is in such disrepair that it's rusting. Wonder if the fog's gonna get thicker. I mean, one would suppose that it would, as we got deeper and closer into the city, because, like, a sort of gradual increase in tension. This was something that was kind of, like, nicely done in the original, that it sets up the premise pretty well. A little bit of exposition, but info dump on you. But you move in here, and you take this long walk. The game doesn't immediately throw you into the action. It just sort of slowly builds the tension as you're going down this trail. Hearing weird noises off in the distance. The fog builds up in intensity. It's just... up, oh, and there's this well here. Should be a save point inside of it. Yep. <laughs> Tire tracks. And this the cemetery. Fog's nice and thick here. Excuse me. <gasps> I'm sorry. I, I was just... Hey, it's okay. I didn't mean to scare you. I'm kind of lost. Lost? Yeah. I'm looking for Silent Hill. Is this the right way? Um, yeah. It's hard to see with this fog, but there's only the one road. You can't miss it. Thanks. But... I think you should stay away. This, uh, this town, there's something wrong with it. And it's not just the fog either. Is it dangerous? Maybe. It's kind of hard to explain, but. I'll be careful. I'm not lying. No, I believe you. It's just... I guess I don't really care if it's dangerous or not. I'm going either way. But why? I'm looking for... Someone. Someone very important to me. Me too. I'm looking for my mama. I mean, my mother. It's been so long since I've seen her. I thought my father and brother were here, but I can't find them either. I'm sorry, it's not your problem. No, I... Uh, I hope you find them. Yeah, you too. So I've been thinking about this and I'm not I wasn't quite sure how I wanted to handle the commentary that I was gonna do for this because I oftentimes try to feign ignorance about things that I damn well know of as I'm playing through the game so I can sort of like talk about it as though it were an experience of having for the first time. But there's no denying the fact that I've played through the original Silent Hill 2 and I know the twists and turns that are coming. And undoubtedly they are going to be the same in the remake as they were in the original. So let's just play off the idea that I know what's coming. Did you, uh... 
Did you want anything else? Uh, no, it's just... this fog. Does it seem... unsettling to you? I guess... Um... It's just through the gate and down the pass. You'll get there in no time. Say anything else? Good luck finding your... the one you're looking for. Yeah. I, uh... I should probably get going. So one of the common things that I've heard in the last few years about the original Silent Hill 2 was an explanation for the poor quality of the voice acting. It was pretty much legendarily bad in the original game. Characters have very stilted dialogue and clearly amateur hour in terms of presentation. And a few years ago, I started hearing people talk about how this was actually an intentional thing on Konami's part because they wanted the, all the characters that you encounter in this are in some way emotionally disturbed. And the idea these people put forward was that this is intentional because all of the characters being emotionally disturbed, they're going to be speaking in confused ways, sound like they're emotionally disturbed. This I don't buy. I don't buy that at all for two reasons. One, the voice acting was equally terrible in the original game, the original Silent Hill. So you're going to tell me that it was unintentional in Silent Hill 1, but intentional in Silent Hill 2? No, I don't buy that. Oh, look at this flooding. Part of the graveyard's flooded. How deep can I go out here? Oh, look at that. I can go surprisingly far. And the other reason why I don't buy that is because uh, if you've ever spoken to a person with sort of emotional instability or somebody who's confused, somebody who's exhausted and can't think straight, they do not sound like the voice acting in Silent Hill 2. That's not what they sound like at all. So it's, in my eyes, clearly an example of just bad voice acting that people have given post hoc um, explanations for. I don't know if this is the right way or not. I might have head back to the direction I came from. This game, though, this voice acting is much better, I'd have to say. If... I, I figure the, the developers of this game... Hey, corn. <laughs> Can I get in there? The developers in this game are actually going for the emotionally disturbed characters that people claim that they were doing in the original. So, kudos to them for that. I just don't believe that that's what the developers of the original Silent Hill 2 were going for. Silent Hill Ranch. Ranch. We grow corn on a ranch. This game is probably going to do the thing that I had pointed out a lot in the remake of Final Fantasy VII, which was take... Hey, is that an item? No, it's not. It's a milk crate. <laughs> take uh, relatively short sections of the game and just expand them in order to add more content. Because Silent Hill 2, if you... like, if It's been years since I played it, like a decade since I played it, but if I were to plop down with it, it would take me like six hours to get through. It's not a terribly long game. Maybe like 10 or so if I were doing it my first run. And that's a little short by modern standards. People don't really want to see a game that short. Um, okay, I'm right. It's adding in extra content. I have to go look for a key. I mean, I might have had to look for a key here in the original. I don't quite remember. But I'm clearly putting a lot more effort into it if that's what I'm doing. Spare keys in the drawer. Thanks for the tip. Now the window's open, so I gotta Hello? climb through a fucking window. Anyone in here? They got the Resident Evil thing about spinning crap around in your fingers for no reason. Is that one of the nurses? I don't. Can I? Can I, like, first-person view? 
I guess not. So it looks like one of the nurses on that poster. <laughs> nice little quality of life thing you see in more and more in games nowadays. This idea that you would have... Uh, that you go in and then you find in some whatever you're looking for and instead of forcing you to backtrack, they just give you a quicker exit by unlocking a door. <laughs> Animation is a little janky, but it's fine. Doesn't have to be perfect. Junkyard? The environment looks similar. Yes, it does in fact look similar, but it has stretched out a little bit. Stretched out a little bit. Clearly the people who made this are fans of the original and they wanted the... They wanted to do a faithful remake. Does James tire out? I'm pretty sure he tired out by running a lot in the original. Oh, quick turn. I can do a quick turn. We are playing Resident Evil. <laughs> Resident Hill. Silent Evil. Oh, he is breathing heavy. But he doesn't rest his hands on his knees or anything. I'm just going to proceed as though we don't have to worry about running out of stamina. It's a bit of a slow build-up. Although I'm in town now. Or almost in town. Yeah, I'm in town. There's park benches and shit. Got a new map. Where'd you find that? Was that just... <laughs> so the fog effects in the original game... I don't know which direction I should go. The fog effects in the original game were largely... And the lighting effects as well. Largely an effect of the hardware architecture of the PlayStation 2. Let me run the other way for a real a quick second largely an effect of the way that the PlayStation 2 was designed to perform advanced effects like that. Nowadays, in order to do something like this, you're going to be using a lot of pixel-level shaders to, like, occlude things in the distance. Whereas back then, there were, like, hardware ways of obscuring things by fog in the distance. But what they ended up doing for the tufts of fog blowing through the environment was to create these semi-transparent textures that look like fog and billboard them onto polygons and just drift them past the camera. And it worked remarkably well. And it was something that the PlayStation 2, at the time anyway, was uniquely good at. Which is why that, one of the reasons why that game looks so good. It pulled in the draw distance, allowing detail to be focused into a smaller section of the environment and really displayed the console's um, high fill rate with that kind of texture. What is this? And that was one of the reasons why the remasters, the HD versions on like the PS3 and the 360 didn't work that well. It's because those consoles were not really made with those super high fill rates in mind. Try running something like that in HD, and you're going to put a lot of strain on your rasterizer and your memory. This game is obviously taking a much more modern approach to uh, graphic design, and we're not looking at quite the same thing. This is done in a much more modern way. And I'd say it really took until probably last generation before you really saw fog effects that looked better than what you would see on the PlayStation 2 just because of the way that fog would look, you know. 
having these program... Oh, okay. Hey! Wait! Having these programmable uh, shaders can produce amazing results, but the shaders that you could use on the PlayStation 3 and the 360 were just not sophisticated enough, not high performant enough to be able to really match the look as good as it could have. Whereas, like the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One would have done a much better job. And I would say that this generation, this is the PS5 and modern PCs we're playing on here, you can really surpass it now, without question. All right, we all know what's coming in here, so let's just have a ganders. So that's not where I'm supposed to go? Look for sure that that was the turn off, but let's keep going. And I hit the barrier. You know, dude, cross that pipe. You can make it. Don't be a puss. There's got to be another way through. Well, maybe I can get into this house because there's nothing blocking the door. Nope. Maybe there's something in this area. Climb on top of this barrel? Fuck, I don't know. <laughs> this isn't even a gate, is it? It is a gate. There's a shit in the way. It's on the other side of the road. There's a little bit of stuttering in the frame right here, but that seems to primarily be the result of um, Bandicam, the screen capturing software I'm using. I've tried, I, when I originally booted it up, I didn't have that running, and it seemed to run a little bit smoother. I don't know if you can see it or not. All right, I'm gonna backtrack a bit, and I'm gonna, okay, here we go. We got blood stains. Look for more blood stains. Because that's how we determined where it was in the original game. I already got sidetracked. Fuck is wrong with me. Okay, we got more. And more. And more. Okay. It's to the left. To the left. Okay. It was definitely to the right in the original, so here is a change. And they're stretching this out further. Okay, so... Maybe because of geography reasons, they couldn't turn your right, because you would double back onto the map if they stretch this out. I hear noises. <laughs> Dude, did that look friendly? <laughs> I don't know what I'm looking for items for. We're too early in the game to be finding things. No yellow paint? We have white cloth. Dude, no. Look how dirty that floor is. Dude, you should be able to kick that open, but fine, if you're just going to gate us from going on further. I don't know what you'd need that for if you locked our exit. This is definitely new. We didn't have to go inside of any houses on this approach. Oh, 
Oh, there are items. Nutrition supplement. How dirty that is. <laughs> Newspapers covering the windows. <laughs> Are we gonna have the encounter in here? Because it was in like an underpass or something like that that we had the fight in the original. We're gonna do it inside of a house. I hear the radio. It's gonna be here. nails. Okay, so the combat is very much improved from the original. I get that the original wasn't supposed to be about combat, and you weren't supposed to feel powerful. So... <laughs> Listen to this fucking guy. You weren't supposed to... You weren't supposed to feel powerful in the original game. So combat was supposed to be clunky and difficult. Like, James isn't supposed to be a soldier or a badass. He's just some fucking loser who is caught in a situation that's well over his head. So it, it would make sense in that context that combat is awkward and difficult. But you know, like how to balance that concept with the idea of a game actually having to be fun, especially in a modern day. So... They had to do something with the combat. I wonder how the gunplay is going to work out. How smooth that feels. I got a thing just disappeared into his hand. Dude, look how nasty that thing is. Don't, don't use that, you fucking weirdo. You're going to give yourself all sorts of diseases. Oh, shit. I didn't expect that to work. I guess that's how I get out. Yes, drawers with nothing in them. Alright, one way forward. That's new, isn't it? Uh, it was Mary, I presume. I couldn't really hear her, but it must have been Mary. And uh, that didn't happen in the original. 35 minutes in. I better bring this to a close and see if I want to pick it up for another episode. Thanks for watching, if you did.